It's a way to look at the moon that really isn't dependent on Western or Vedic astrology. It's actually based on where the planets are actually placed in the chart, whether it's the tropical zodiac or the sidereal zodiac. And I really do a lot of work that way. And I think, actually, as Dennis alluded to, there are a lot of Vedic astrologers, so I think they somewhat drop the ball a little bit. It's like you never hear them talking about transits or something. And there's nothing like when a planet transits another planet, for instance, like when a when a transiting planet hits a natal planet, something's going to happen. And similarly, when you, when you look at a birth chart and you see the spatial relationship between, let's say, the moon and like a planet that rises before the moon or after the moon, it's going to tell you something. It doesn't really matter which zodiac you're using or anything. It's going to be a very specific um, type of result. Talking about the moon first, you know, the sun is the archetype of sort of masculine energy or expressed, you know, radiant solar energy is the sort of the engine that drives our mind and drives our body and drives our life. We all sort of know that as Western astrologers, very sun sign driven. But the moon, you know, I think sometimes it's a little less clear what's happening. It's sort of the emotion, sort of the feelings, but you really want to look at the moon, at least as I've seen it, as the archetypical feminine nature, our capacity to integrate, to receive, to feel. And that quality of integration is very important in Vedic teaching because in many ways this is why we suffer in life, because we don't feel integrated. We have these unintegrated parts. So the moon is really, it really shows those unintegrated parts and our, and our um, desire and our capacity to integrate and to feel integrated. And so you'll see that the moon, it is very exalted in Vedic astrology, and in fact, when people talk about their dasha, they're generally talking about their Vinshotri Mahadasha, which is sort of the preferred dasha in Vedic astrology, and it's based on uh, the moon, and it's a very important one, and the reason that this one is so important is because it shows what the mind is going to be gravitating toward, and if you can read the mind and the impressions rising in the mind, you'll be able to tell what the person will wind up doing. This is why Vinshotri Dasha is probably the most preferred in Vedic astrology because you're essentially reading the mind of a person and what are called the samskaras, which means the mental impressions that are that have been created from our karma. And this is again, this is a very sort of trans transpersonal or um, universal quality of Vedic astrology that's really built into it on a foundational level that we're all spiritual beings that come here. And when you look at the chart, you're really reading the mental impressions and the samskaras that are awakening in the person's consciousness at different times. And based on that, they take these actions, and based on that, things sort of move forward. So when we assess moon yogas or anything related to the moon, we're essentially reading the mind. And you think your clients would like you to be able to read their mind and know how they're feeling. Well, they really do. It's very valuable when you can look at a person and really know what their mind is gravitating toward how they feel while they're experiencing their feelings, and how they try to integrate their feelings. So this is why it says that when we assess moon yoga, it's assessing the capacity to receive, to feel, and to integrate. These are the things that the moon, that the moon does. So I, you know, this is quite a brief presentation, but, and you know, this will work with basically any zodiac. You want to look at planets that rise before the moon. This would be in the 12th sign from the moon, to see how the person is, what their mind is going to, gravitate toward, and when I say mind, I mean the heart mind, which is, again, sort of different from Vedic astrology, uh, from Western astrology. You know, we think a little bit, not much. We, we mainly feel. We're mainly feeling beings. And in the Vedic system, the moon refers to that quality of mind, or manas is what it's called, which is the feeling, thinking, substance process. It's sort of what we're all kind of gravitating toward how we're feeling, that's what the moon shows. So planets that rise in the 12th house before the moon shows what we're going to gravitate toward, what our mind is going to gravitate toward. Because again, the moon is our capacity to feel and to be receptive. Um, that's why the moon is also related to our childhood. And if we had a difficult childhood, we're going to gravitate toward difficult things. That's what will feel normal to us. So it's sort of how these things are related. So when you see, for instance, Venus that rises before the moon, then the person will naturally gravitate toward things of Venus nature, things that are beautiful, things that are sensual, wanting to be around other people. They'll gravitate to Venus-type things. 
lens that rise after the moon, which is in the second house from the moon, will be how the person tries to integrate their experiences. I'm skipping with the moon right now just because I'll come back to it, but what happens with the planets after the moon is after we've felt something and experienced something, then we try to integrate that into our being because we want to feel whole. And that's why we suffer in life, because we don't feel whole. We feel fragmented. The moon tries to allow us to feel whole. It senses the unity in all things. And then when we're not flowing with that unity, we suffer. And we want something to make us feel whole. In our mistake, we reach outside of ourselves. But you see what we're reaching for um, based on these things that affect the moon. So the planet after the moon helps us integrate. So, for instance, if it's Mars that's after the moon, the person will likely do something active. Maybe they'll like to work out as a way to help themselves integrate. Maybe they'll like to argue, right? Mm -hmm. They'll have to break something, right? They'll, they'll totally make a break with the thing. For instance, these type of things when you get Mars after the moon. And then you get planets join the moon. And you'll notice planets that join the moon because while the person is experiencing their feelings, that thing will be joined their mind. So let's say, you know, Jupiter is joining the moon. Then they're big, big emotions. Things get ratcheted up real big. Once they start feeling something and, they, and, and their emotional mind gets awakened, it gets blown up. And it can be good or bad, not necessarily um, positive all the time. It's a little bit different in Vedic astrology. We assess the planets on many levels. But you really want to look at the planets as what's called a karaka at first when you um, look at these things. And the karaka means it's natural um, quality. So Jupiter. Um, when Jupiter affects the moon, it's going to bring about teachings, gurus, philosophy, optimism, hope, things like that. Um, so when you get the planets on, that, on like either side of the moon in this way, it's either going to gravitate us toward the thing when it's the 12th before the moon. When it's with the moon, it's, it'll show how we feel while we're, or how we are um, Responding while the moon, or while we're processing our feelings, excuse me. And then when it's after, it shows how we integrate our feelings, okay? What we do to try to feel whole. But uh, the other level, when you assess the moon yogas and the, and the things that affect the moon, are the planets and angles from the moon. So if, if a person doesn't have any planet in the second, twelfth, or join the moon, um, it's considered a bit of a blemish. I think it's an overstated blemish because it just shows what it shows. And the, and the planets that surround the moon also have a different, have a bit of a difficulty at times as well. But the planets and angles from the moon, that's the fourth, the seventh, or the tenth house from the moon, also help us support and integrate our feelings. And, um, you know, the moon in many ways is related to our sense of identity and our sense of wanting to, it's really who we, who, who we think we are is really related to the moon as I see it. And, how, and who we think we are has a lot to do with how we treat others, how we feel about ourselves has to do with um, you know, how we treat others, and all this is related to the things that we're gravitating towards. So it's why it's so important in Vedic thinking to make sure to surround ourselves with uplifting influences because we're so much a product of our environment, and the moon is how we take everything in. Okay. Um, so you can really use this in any of your charts in your Western or Vedic chart. <laughs> <laughs>